Robert Allen here once again, chatting with LaRoyce Hawkins. It's good to see you. Thanks again for your time and uh, hanging out with us for a few minutes a day. I appreciate it. Man, thanks for having me, bro. You know, it's a good time every time. It is. Yeah. So I was trying to remember, I think it was two years ago, maybe a year ago. I, it, it all has run together at this point. We've had a ton of your castmates on um, and uh, we had PJ and Marina on. And they had a lot of good things to say, man. They say that you give the best interviews and they always watch what you do. And uh, they're like, try being his friend. It's just every moment is a special moment. So they maybe promise to give you a hard time. But um, oh, man. I, I love them, man. I love them. Um, yeah, they're the best. They they were a lot of fun. And of course, you are. You were our first uh, one Chicago guest. You have a big episode coming up. This is huge. I mean, I feel like all of them are that. If I go back and listen to what I've said about everybody I've spoken to, they're just all intense. But May 3rd is a big one for you. I've seen the episode, The Bleed Valve. Um, yeah. Early on in the season, back in January, you meet your father, played by Eric LeRae Harvey, which is huge. That I don't think we saw that coming. That was a big moment for you. When you found out, we'll get into the episode, but when you found out that this was going to happen for your character, where were you at with that as a storyteller? It had to be like another big reveal for you as because you've had a lot of different ones, but this is a huge one for sure. Yeah, this was a huge one. I was grateful for it because I knew um, it was a part of Atwater's history um, that, that he was still healing from. Yeah, you know, and and as a as a black man, um, and as a as a as a black son, you know, I, I knew that that would be a very specific group of people that um, that I'll directly be able to affect, mm -hmm. um, because I, I know that relationships between fathers and sons, whether they're the most ideal or whether they're uh, not, um, they're they're real to everybody at every level, you know. So uh, for us, we just wanted to create something that felt real. We didn't know exactly what it was going to feel like. Um, you know, you never know. I know over time, as I've thought about um, Atwater's father, I imagined something that wasn't exactly what the writers imagined, hmm. you know? So, um, so, so there's that um, conversation where you try to find balance and, you know, there's some things you got to let go of. And then there are some things that you obviously hold on to. Um, but but I was grateful that Eric LeRae, um, that Eric LeRae was was so passionate about being collaborative um, and about communicating. You know, um, we had to communicate a lot as artists in order to portray the miscommunication and the miscommunications of the characters. Yeah. You know, um, so so that was so that was an interesting journey and uh, i learned a lot from that especially this imagine. episode yeah this episode well i have to say i think i've mentioned this i'm a dad i have an eight-year-old but i watched this i'm 49 i'll be turning and i watched this and i i just can't help relate on some levels as to what my future relationship with my son could be like if God forbid things went in a weird direction, which I don't think they would, but you just never know. So mm -hmm. it's very personal for me in that way to watch those initial reactions that you have. I know as a guest star, when people come on to shows that have been well oil machines, I think you guys are like on your ninth or 10th season. I mean, it just seems like, mm -hmm. it's, like for, it's been going uh, remarkably you mentioned communication as artists and, and people having to be open and collaborative. That has to feel good for you as an artist and for your other castmates too, when you have somebody come in that's new, that's open to maybe perhaps the way you've been doing things or just mm -hmm. going, okay, how can we, you mentioned this the last time and others as well, in the most authentic way without it seeming like we're acting, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, you know, that was um we Eric the Ray honestly helped me as he communicated with me um very vulnerably the the rhythm that him and his father share. Okay. You know, um 
I would, I, I would do the same thing. I would share the rhythm that me and my father shared. Um, you know, we would, we would be open to hearing um, different versions of father-son relationships that, that, that helped relate and that helped tell the story that we wanted to tell because I think it's a mixture of all those things, right? So to be able to, um, um, what, what was interesting between the dynamic between Atwater and his dad um, is that, you know, Atwater feels like he cares about every other boy on the block but him. You know, he, there's this trigger where it's like he, 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 his ego or that the, the, his young selfishness wants all of his father's attention to go to him first before it goes anywhere else. And Eric LeRae Harvey was very transparent about how he grew up and his father would show out for all of his homies. But when it was, when it was just him and his dad alone, sometimes, you know, he, he, he wouldn't feel the same energy. So I was grateful for, for us to be able to communicate at that level, because at that point I knew what to tap into. You know what I'm saying? I knew what kind of dynamic we were playing with. And it was personal and, um, you know, we, we had that reference on us. So that was that was great. And so that's why it's important just to communicate, um, because you never know if there's a reference in your life or in your, the life of your scene partners where, oh, we have something that we know we can connect to. And we can we can we can reimagine that for our audience and then hopefully they relate. Yes. And I I found that to be the theme from your castmates that we've had and other people from the one Chicago world is that there's always something that's relatable to somebody in the cast and a, and a scene partner, as you said, that makes it just adds another layer of believability. Well, this is a big one. As I said, the bleed valve, which I feel at least from my perspective is a foreshadowing of your relationship with your father on this show. It may be perhaps Benjamin, Aguilar's character Ocean as you are it seems to be you're taking him under your wing and sort of working with yeah. him but the bleed valve you're and we're this will air simultaneously with the episode so just not too big of a spoiler here but essentially it's a way to relieve pressure in a system that you're trying to perform maintenance on your character's uh, father says that at the end and you're like oh yeah that kind of makes sense and we see this realization of maybe this relationship with your father will continue to to grow and build, hopefully, and we'll see more of this. Because I just think it's fun. Because uh, your character, as we talked about this before, is pretty serious. And when he does smile or when he does laugh, there's a reason for it, right? It's not just like levity for the sake of levity, yeah. maybe like on another show. So I'm interested yeah. to know, I've asked your other castmates, oftentimes these scenes that you film like this, well, let me back up the episode. There's a shooting at the building that you now own and you have to work with him to solve this crime. Maybe as little as you don't want to work with him, it seems like, but you're a bit forced and he sort of does some things that you're not too thrilled with, but it just happens to work out. Thankfully, mm -hmm. these scenes can be filmed out of order. Sometimes like one mm -hmm. day it might be fun. The other day it's serious. How do you, as a, as an artist and storyteller, how are you able to shift gears from those like deep emotional moments to maybe something that might be a little bit more lighthearted? How how do you work through that yeah. process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really and 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 that's and that's something that over time I've I, I hope I've gotten better at and I and I appreciate and I'm grateful for the 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 time that I still have. You know what I'm saying to keep on swinging at this. Um, because every episode presents different dynamics, different emotions that you have to tap into, but also different schedules, you know? Mm -hmm. So you don't, I appreciate you bringing up the shooting out of order because sometimes you never know, you know, you might have to do an extreme scene where you might have to either take a bullet or, or, or cry or be extremely strong and followed by a whole bunch of lighthearted moments but you needed those lighthearted moments to inform, you know, the balance of th that strength that you just gave us. What's interesting about this episode was, believe it or not, the first scene that we shot was um, the scene between Atwater and Oscar 
when I when I tell them or when I try to reimagine what happened, mm. the incident, you know, and that's a oh wow, that's a big monologue, right? Yeah, that's, that's a, a that's a we started off with a lot of words, but I was grateful to be able to activate my imagination for that part. You know, you have to put yourself in a position to relive how the the the, the situation probably happened. And so me diving into that, you know, having to be extremely gentle, having to think like a child a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like not a criminal, but a child. And, and how would a child respond, you know, to darkness, you know, to bad news, wow. put yourself in those shoes. And so for me to have to start with that scene, honestly helped set the tone for the whole episode for me wow. because I was able to, I, I was able to really grow from a, from a good place there, you know? So I knew it was going to be a good episode as soon as we were done shooting that scene because it felt good and that set the tone for everything else. Um, wow. But, but, you know, I'm, I'm still doing my best with the technique of timing and really being ahead of the schedule. You have to be ahead of the schedule and, you know, really take it one day at a time and kind of pace your energy and pace your emotions because every day you got to knock out like five to seven different scenes that don't have anything to do with each other. But by the time we put them together, we want it to make sense. I love it. Well, Royce, it's always a pleasure. This episode airs uh, May 3rd, The Bleed Valve. And then, of course, the season finale, May 24th. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and your castmates and the entire universe. Thank you so much for your time. It's it's always so much fun. And congratulations, as always. I appreciate your time, man. No, thank you, Brett Allen, man. This means a lot, bro. Keep doing your thing. Absolutely. Thank you.